Thank you, Felicia. Uh, I'm Usha Goswami. I'm the director of the Centre for Neuroscience and Education at the University of Cambridge. And as John said, we took a lifespan perspective in this project. So we started in the womb and in the cradle. And I was really responsible for the uh, aspects of the report to do with children. And one thing we decided we really ought to try and highlight in this report is the common learning difficulties of childhood, which are quite prevalent. Uh, we estimate that around 10% of children have a specific learning difficulty of some kind. So this means something specific like dyslexia, problems with reading, or dyscalculia, which is specific problems with number, or attention disorders, or language disorders, specific language impairments. And there's been a revolution, really, in the scientific evidence in the last decade or so that has shown that these learning difficulties are all brain-based. They're not uh, excuses made by anxious parents. They're real differences in the brain of, of those affected children in how information is processed. And something that's a very small difference at the beginning of the life course, if it's not, um, if we don't intervene early and identify these problems early, then over the developmental trajectory, we can get these quite big gaps opening up, which means there's a real cost to that child in terms of their mental capital. And the project also showed that there are costs to the society as, as well, because as well as um, impacting on the lifetime earnings or the school achievement of the, of the individual who's affected, there can be knock-on effects for the rest of uh, society in terms of things like social cohesion or inclusion. We also looked a bit in the report at the adolescent brain because, again, in the last decade, we've learned a lot more about how the brain effectively reorganises its networks in adolescence. And during this period of reorganisation, we get these kind of odd behaviours that we see in our teenagers, like not being able to wake up in the morning. Um, but it also means that in that particular developmental window, any insult to the brain, like uh, a drug addiction or an, uh, alcohol abuse, is going to have very serious effects in how well the brain can restructure itself to optimise mental capital for that individual. Uh, some of the interventions we suggest in the report really are to try and improve this early detection of learning difficulties. I think in the next decade or so we'll have pretty good uh, neural markers or biomarkers from genetics and neuroscience that can help us pinpoint which brains are functioning in these slightly atypical ways very early in childhood. We already have good cognitive markers, so we know, for example, there's a specific problem with understanding magnitude and quantity in a child who has dyscalculia, which is as prevalent uh, as dyslexia. And there's a particular problem with the sound structure of language for a child who has dyslexia. We'd also like to um, suggest that these new advances in the brain sciences are brought into teacher training in a very systematic way. So, as I said, I'm director of the Centre for Neuroscience. We actually get lots of teachers coming to Cambridge to try and learn about these developments in the brain sciences, but those haven't yet been systematically incorporated into initial teacher training uh, or into continuing professional development. And so we also suggest some ways in which that could occur in the report. So I'd like to hand over now to Rachel, who's going to talk about mental ill health. 